and the segmentation process will produce discrete segments for us. But it's a kind of a bit of a voyage of discovery segmentation. Uh, rather than being a pure science, it's a kind of combination of science and art. We've talked about measuring relationships in our key drivers work. Segmentation is a different approach. It's really about grouping people together based on maybe their attitudes, their needs, their behaviors. So what we're doing is we're trying to create groups of people who are similar to the people within the same group, but different to others. So we're creating distinct segments or identifying distinct segments within the marketplace. And this approach is used to inform a number of different sort of parts of the client business. So we often use segmentation to kind of develop marketing messages and so on differently for different groups of people. We'll use it to understand basic needs and behaviors and also used a lot in product development, both for identifying different need spaces and also opportunity spaces. So, you know, in terms of business questions, you know, articulations of, of those areas that I've just covered. So, you know, who is my target audience and how do I best treat them? How do I create tailored communications to target specific segments of the population? What are the opportunities for product development? Where are the unmet needs and so on? In terms of how we do segmentation, so um, there are, again, a range of different analytic techniques, which I'm not going to go into. But essentially, what each of these does is it creates distinct groups of people based on the variables of interest that which of these approaches you choose will depend entirely on the situation and, and the requirements you have for the analysis. And I'm sure that the other courses that MRI run, and particularly the advanced analytics course, will go into more detail on this. But in terms of how a segmentation is constructed, I guess we've got um, two types of variables that we're interested in. The first we call active variables. So these are the sort of variables that we, uh, or information from the survey that we use to actually create the segmentation. So they're the input variables. And we will also have a set of profiling variables, which will allow us to understand a bit more about the segments when, we, when we've created them. So once the, the analytic process has created the segments, we need to interpret them. And we don't know when we start how many segments really exist. And in fact, a segmentation process will create a range of solutions from maybe four segments, five, six, seven. And so our task is to decide how many segments is optimal and then what those segments look like. And we do this in a number of ways. So the output that we generate from a segmentation is quite extensive, but the key is what we call segment profile. So what we're gonna do is having created segments, we're going to profile them in terms of both the input variables that we use to create the segmentation, so needs, category behaviors, and so on, along with demographics. So we can profile segments to understand, uh, you know, we've got a segment here, segment two, which is predominantly female. We've got a segment uh, here, segment four, which is predominantly younger people. But Underlying that, we've got all of the category behaviors and the attitudes that we use to drive the segmentation. And at the end of the day, part of the, the, the kind of process of, and it is an iterative process of developing a segmentation, is going through the process of deciding how many segments we need and what those segments look like and fine tuning them. And once we've made those decisions, then we'll generate sort of segment profiles to help the client understand what the different segments look like. And again, these will contain a fair range, a fairly wide range of information. So you'll see here, we've got a segment where we're looking at the demographics of that segment, their education levels, the structure of their needs, the, uh, their affinities for different services and, and, and companies, and then their behaviors as well. So the level of ownership. In this case, this is around sort of uh, tech provision, internet, fixed line, and mobile networks and the entertainment that comes through them. So there's a whole host of information here about 
the behaviors of this particular segment. And we'll obviously uh, produce these maps for each segment in turn so that the client can understand the difference between the segments. Here's another example where we're looking at an internet oriented segment. And here, interestingly, we've asked questions within the survey so we can, we can look at their behaviors vis-a-vis uh, -vis the internet and internet connected devices through the course of the, of the day. What we also do with segments is we work quite hard to create values by both current and future values for the segments so that we can help clients to prioritize which segments to target. And so here, there's just a very simple plot of future value against a sort of ease of entry or ease of acquisition. So what we're helping the client with here is identifying the high value segments but also helping them to understand which segments are kind of easier to acquire and, and others where they're really going to have to, in order to, to realize the value of these segments, they're really going to have to invest. So to invest and grow that quadrant.